la 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 Okay, so we have a very special episode today. It'll be the first of many interviews that we're doing. And our first guest is Dr. Romel Zabate. He's a doctor in physical therapy. Romy, nice to have you on. Yeah, thank you for having me. Of course. So most of you watching are either active or you work out. And if you work out, you probably are dealing with some sort of pain or recurring injury, like we all do. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about today. So if you are interested in knowing how to manage your pain and what to do about pain and how to prevent pain, then stick around because that's what this episode is all about. So on that note, when it comes to pain management, how do you think about pain management as a physical therapist? Yeah, when we think of pain management, one of the things that we wanna focus on is trying to be educated on what pain is. You know, one of the things that we wanna do is try to see what is causing your pain as well as trying to see, to see what we can do to make it better as well as to see if we can aggravate it that allows us to learn what your body can handle and what you can do okay great that's a good way to think about it and what initially inspired you to to specialize in pain management or to even become a physical therapist because you come from a, a training background as well yeah so being in the, in the personal training field for about, like, what, since 2016, uh, you see that people wanted to work with had some issues of pain. Like, that's, that's probably one of the things that you have seen yourself where your clients have either some previous injury or they have a current issue that they're working with. So essentially for what I wanted to do was just try to help people, especially people that wanted to take the big step of all right i want to get into a, a healthier life but when they start doing some things then they may experience some of that pain and that's where i was like all right i want to help those people out to help them make sure that they can keep going and keep doing what they want to do and love yeah because it's it can be so frustrating especially when it's already hard enough to start working out or start that fitness journey but then exactly. if you have an injury now it's a huge setback and psychologically and we're going to talk about the psychology but mm -hmm. it takes a huge toll on you to just oh now i gotta deal with this knee thing or this yeah. back thing you know and and it could be enough to just demotivate someone and just allow them to just fall off the wagon completely exactly exactly so since you're dealing with the active population what are the most common injuries that you see the shoulder the hip knee, just around just joints, right? Um, usually one of the things that we, we see is people will have some of that pain or some of that discomfort at a certain area, but is it just that area that is causing that pain or is it more? And usually there's a lot more when we look at to what is causing that pain. I would imagine low back pain too. Yeah, is huge. Yeah. yeah, low back pain is one of the biggest ones that we see. And essentially, it's actually, I believe, one of the top five disabilities in the world right now. Wow. And so one of the biggest things that we see um, that's very common is it's not just a biomechanical issue, meaning like muscles, ligaments, and all those things in our body, but it's also factors that we forget, including the environment and as well as your psychological. Mm, great. And I definitely want to dig into that in a little bit. Uh, but you mentioned something that was like a big insight for me because I've dealt with a lot of pain, as you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and one of the biggest things working with so many PTs like yourself and others is that whole like you might be experiencing pain here and let's say your knee, but it doesn't stem from your knee. I think that for somebody who is not in the industry like ourselves, that can be a little bit of a uh, like a big new insight. Like, oh, what do you mean? It's not my knee. Like you're used to my knee hurts. I go to a knee specialist. Yeah they fix it, I move on. And it's like, well, it could probably actually stem from your hip or your yeah. foot, somewhere up or down the chain. So yeah. that's just always been very interesting to me and I'm sure to the listeners too. Yeah, so when we think about pain, there's times where um, pain is like a disguise. It, you can have pain here, but the root cause could be from somewhere else. All right, so let's, let's, let's talk about the knee. So usually with the knee, the knee, there could be issues coming from the ankle or there could be issues coming from the hip. And that's where, cause it's literally right in the middle between those two. So if there is, let's just say a limitation here during like a squat, then if your hip doesn't have much of that motion, then the next thing that will have 
the motion to get you lower, get that depth, is going to be either your knees or your ankles. And usually, most of the time, it's the knee. It's basically compensating for a lack somewhere else. Exactly. Or an Ex imbalance of some sort. Exactly. And that's, and that's where we see people, if they have a knee issue, they're just working the knee out, working the knee out, and working it. It's like, oh, let me get a massage here. Let me just do my leg extensions and all these things. But it, they, it's been weeks where it's like, all right, it hasn't gotten better. And usually, we, that's where we're like, all right, we have to take a look at what else is there. Now, pain is a, an interesting thing because a lot of times we'll be working with a client and they'll say, oh, I'm feeling some pain in my lower back. And I always have to specify, is it pain that you're feeling? Describe the pain because yep. I want you to talk about what is the difference between like just like exercise, everyday kind of fatigue. Like let's say your lower back gets fatigued doing deadlifts and actual pain. There are yep. different types of pain, right? When we look at pain, uh, we have to understand what is pain. And pain is essentially a sensory where it tells us that the tissue is either damaged or has a potential damage. And that's where looking at it when you're working out and you're feeling like, oh, I'm doing 100 bicep curls, I'm feeling this pain, that's going to be muscles working. Versus if you're doing a shoulder press and your body is like, you're able to do 50 pounds, but now you can only do 10 pounds. That's where it's like, all right, that's going to be the difference of muscles working versus an actual either tissue damage or your body's telling you, hey, something's happening. And another thing I've learned through my own uh, dealing with my own pain is that uh, you get once you've had an injury or, or some sort of like chronic pain somewhere, even if your problem is, quote unquote, fixed, your body is highly sensitized, right, in that yeah. area. So you might still feel pain. Yeah. Like I've had a hernia repair and then I go out and work out after months after and it's like you still feel that discomfort there, but the hernia has been repaired, yeah. but you might still feel like it's highly sensitized, right? Yeah. It's like your body's paying more attention now to that area. Exactly, exactly. And that's, that's gonna be one of the things with like pain and discomfort is when you, it's not just a muscles issue, it's also a neurological issue. So there's times in our body we have this system called the fight or flight system or like that sympathetic nervous system where it elevates our senses, it, elev it contracts our muscles, increases the heart rate. It's like that feeling where if you drop your phone in the water and you pick it back up, it's basically you're hypersensitive to your surroundings. Mm. Same thing with like when you're in like that constant pain is essentially when you're there, your, your body is just like... Um, I guess you can say the increased sensitivity of it. So like, yeah, there's times where you'll be doing like a deadlift or a squat, then you may feel some of that discomfort, especially if you have previous history. However, we have to remember that our body is telling us it's maybe a perceived, um, perceived danger. However, is it an actual danger? Mm. That's the question that we have to that we have to see and as well as what we can work towards. Yeah, and I'm sure PT. I know I can speak for many people. That's kind of a tough line to um, to balance on because how do you know that it's, you know, exactly that, that it's perceived versus like a real danger? Exactly. And sometimes your back just hurts. You know? Yeah. <laughs> and then like with when you try to differentiate the two, usually I, I tell people it's like, all right, is muscles working? Is it something where it's like, um, the muscles are tightening or is it something where it's like it's that sharp pain or it's something that just feels off mm. right it feels like you're forcing it if you feel like you're forcing it then or you're pushing through it then that's where i'm like all right let's take a step back let's reset let's try to see what we can do um but if it if it subsides then it's like all right we're good but then if it keeps constant and constant and you just keep pushing through it then that's where i'm like all right Take a step back. Let's add a add a modification or something where we can try to at least like alleviate what's happening over there. You bring up a good point, and that's working with a professional, whether it's a physical therapist or a, a knowledgeable trainer, where you have somebody that you can trust to tell you, "Hey, ease off," or "No, you're okay. You can keep going." But I would imagine that if you're working out by yourself, it's very hard to like have that self awareness of, "Yeah, 
hey, should I keep going with this and push it? Or is it time to kind of take a step back or maybe try something different today? Maybe try another, like a regression or a variation to that exercise. Exactly. And that's going to be one where, you know, working with a professional helps you because it, at least it gives you a baseline of what modifications you can do as well as um, what, what tools that you can get. Because that's the most important part with pain. It's having that control. And when you visit a professional, whether it's a PT or if you're going to be working with a trainer or strength coach, uh, one of the things that we can do is essentially give you the tools and give you the, the modifications so that you can keep going and keep training. So this whole idea of pain-free is something that's marketed a lot in the fitness industry. I don't know about the PT industry, but definitely the fitness industry yeah. where it's like, pain-free training or like hire me as like your pain-free yeah. strength coach and is there such a thing as pain-free can you guarantee that no no you can't you can't guarantee pain-free it's it's you know we have to normalize that pain is a normal thing that we will experience in our lifetime uh, i believe in our lifetime at least 85 percent of people are going to experience some sort of pain um and it's one of those things where if we can normalize what like the feeling of pain and and like after like let's just say you have like you're either working out five to six times a week or you're doing a sport five to six times a week then you are going to have some aches and pains and that's where we have to go educate individuals that it's okay to experience pain and our body's resilient to the point where our body does heal our body does take the time to be like, hey, we need to take a step back. However, if that like pain and discomfort keeps occurring, that's where we need to take a step back. Yeah, and I feel like a lot of people have the, the ones who aren't active, they look at like the fit population and they think that we're the epitome of health, right? Like if I work out like that, I, I, I would assume that that person has less of a chance of being yeah. injured and stuff, but yeah. that's not true. Anyone yeah. who actually works out knows yeah. that it's, it's the opposite, right? Yeah. But so then there's some cynical people that would say, well, look at you, you're working out all the time and you're all hurt. And it's like, yeah, but at least I'm strong and resilient exactly. and I have all these other positive things associated with exercise. Whereas exactly. if you don't do anything, you're, guess what? You're still gonna have pain. Exactly. Most people that are sedentary have low back pain, have knee pain, except you're, you're in pain and you're weak. Yeah. So which exactly. one would you rather be? Exactly. You know? And the benefits of exercise is going to exceed the, 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 the discomfort risk. and the risk and the pain that you, you're experiencing just because it's, it's not just a localized or like a small reward that you're getting. It's a whole systematic reward in a, like a, the psychological aspect of it, the mental health aspect of it, as well as your wellness. So yeah like and honestly like i say this to my clients all the time but every week literally every week new research comes out of of another benefit of strength training cardio and just exercise in general it's like every week like the the research is is insane like and like you said it's not just for from a physical the obvious things but it's psychological it's prevention of disease prevention of alzheimer's prevention exactly. of cancers it's so many things that you're literally just making your body more resilient exactly. and stronger and the, your probability of having good quality of life is just enhanced exactly. through training. So that being said about the pain-free thing, are there any strategies that you can actually take to, to mitigate the risk of pain or, or of having an injury while you're working out? Yeah, so I think one of the biggest things that you can do is um, when you're starting your exercise, just warm up. And the warm up can be anything, you know. Uh, if you see at BFIT, we, we have a set warm up, but then each trainer has their own spin to it. So you can do anything that you want to warm up. That's what the science says for warming up. But as long as you're doing something, let's just say you're, you're going to go heavy on squats one day, um, you can do your mobility hip ones, right? You can do your hip 9090s, you can do your pigeon stretch, you can do your the merengue that we, that oh, we do. Yep. I love the merengue. Yep. yep. So. Or the other route that you can take if you just want to go straight to the squats is you just grab the bar, the barbell, or some dumbbells, and you can just do like 10, 15, 20 squats. And what is the risk? Because we have a lot of listeners, and not a lot, but a few people that just refuse to warm up. They hate it. They skip the warm up. What is the risk of not warming up and just going straight into it? Sometimes with the risk of just going from zero to 100, 
your those muscles in the body they're not ready for the load right it's like essentially it's like you go like sometimes when you like you accidentally put the gas pedal down you get that whiplash right mm-hmm. same exact thing when you're warming up it's like you want to ease your body into what you're doing because it's if you have the um, if you go straight to zero to 100 like i'm gonna rack 225 pounds on the on the bar then essentially you may not get the full depth right you may not so if you're not getting the full depth and you're kind of like bsing your exercise or bsing your workout i think a good analogy for the listeners is is uh try to stretch when you just wake up in the morning exactly. you're super stiff right but exactly. as you warm up throughout the day you're walking around you're using your muscles and your joints you can usually loosen up a little bit yeah it's the same analogy with with working out if you just come in a lot of people have to realize that exercise is a stress yeah you know, you're lifting heavy weights it's a lot on your body so you want to Get everything ready. Get the machine going. Get yeah. it, you know, warmed up, in order for you to handle those those heavier weights and heavier loads. Exactly. So let's say somebody comes to you with some sort of pain. Let's say low back pain. What is your method? Like, what is the first thing that you do yeah. with that person, and what's your like treatment look like? Yeah. So the first thing that I do is essentially just talk to that individual. All right. Want to see what their history is. Want to see what they're doing as well as how long they have experiencing that like pain or discomfort. There's times where if we just have a conversation, you can figure out what is happening. When you, when you take the time to listen, everything just unfolds. When you ask the question, oh, what happened? And then you ask more questions. Out of those questions, the person's like, oh, wait a minute, I had this too. And it's like, ah, okay. You start unraveling the mm-hmm. layers of what could possibly be happening because that leads us to what we need to take a look at it's not like we're throwing spaghetti at the wall and figuring out like what the you need context in other words right it it tells you so much and that's why i'm so skeptical of all these uh virtual solutions that are being offered these days where it's like um you know you see it on tiktok and instagram all the time fix back pain forever yeah it's like how the hell do you know what my specific back pain is you know but they're gonna sell you that my three moves are gonna fix your back pain forever exactly and and with those they're 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 general exercises that could help right however it's just like a cookie cutter Mm. it's a cookie cutter thing it's like oh oh go do a leg day okay just do squats it's like basically telling someone to do that once we have that conversation then we take we do an evaluation and try to see what movements and what things, whether there's impairments or if there's positions of aggravation or positions of alleviation, right? Because that tells us, okay, these are things that your body likes to do and then these are things that your body may want, we want to work on. We look at the, if there's limitations either at the site or around the joints that are surrounding it. Mm. And then from there, once we have an idea and once, once we treat the symptoms, right, then that's where we give you the exercises to strengthen. And the biggest part that, I mean, I've been a PT since 2021, and one of the biggest things that I have implemented ever since is uh, education. Education on pain, education on what it is, as well as education on what the individual can do that's what is going to be the biggest part for dealing with injuries or that pain or discomfort that th- that person has. I can completely attest to that as a as a patient myself. Once you learn certain things, it, it just like opens your mind. And one of the things I think you can agree with me is uh, you get a lot of fear when you're injured or when you're yeah. in pain. And a lot of times you're you're fearful to even do the things that you love, whether it's yeah. playing a sport or working yeah. out. And then once a good PT explains to you, look this is the way this works and this is normal and then you might and you're like okay great i can keep doing my thing and i just have to do use these tools and these strategies but at least i understand that this is normal and it empowers you in a way exactly exactly it empowers and one of the things with fear actually in the brain emotions and fear and pain they actually go i believe i mean you might have to fact check me on this but i believe it's Jamie, a, pull yeah. that up. <laughs> we have um it's called the amygdala and it's where we process emotions as well as pain. There again, there's different pathways for pain to get to the, to the brain and everything, but that's gonna be one of the areas that you process it. And that's where if you have that fear, 
that's how fear can influence the pain that you're having, right? So it's like, let's just say I have a fear of picking something up from the ground, my body may tense up without even trying to move or anything. Just the thought of it can cause you to have some of the discomfort. And that's what we try to work on. We, we, um, we always think of keep your core tight, right? Or strengthen your core. However, one of the things that we want to work on is just, it's called neuro re-education. It's just re-educating your body to move. Mm. Yeah. Can you tell me about the Romy's walk of shame? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> the walk is that the walk. <laughs> So we have people when they come here for evaluation or any time they <laughs> any time they come for a a session, we t- take them to the turf and we let them walk. And a walk can show a lot of things. A walk can show whether there is something happening in the hips, something happening in the spine or the, the torso, as well as the arm swing. So it's, a, it's an assessment tool that I use. From there, we, that dwells us into our evaluation. Yeah, I have two points to add to that. One is, uh, it's funny how you never think about how you walk until Romy makes you walk and then you like feel awkward and you're like, <laughs> yeah. am I doing it right? And then you're like overthinking the walking. Yeah. Um, but the other thing too is like, uh, we do the same thing in the strength training community where it's like uh, movement tells you a lot. You know, exactly. you can tell a lot about what's going on by watching the body. That's why we always do like a squat assessment and a step up assessment or a lunge. Yeah. And we can see what's happening. Oh, is there a sway to one side? Exactly. Is like a foot pronating a little too much? You won't tell that by standing because sometimes the body's very good at hiding exactly. it. Exactly. But then when you go, you do a walk or you do a jog or you do a squat. We can see, ooh, there's some, there's an issue here. There's exactly. an imbalance here. So exactly, it's like you put someone on a squat. The squat may look fine, but then once you put them under load, yep. that's when you start seeing something. Yep, yep. Yeah. It's really interesting. So now we're gonna leave you with some practical tips. Like this is all great. I'm sure you've learned a lot, but what can we actually do, right? So on that note, what what are some strategies? I know you already mentioned warming up, but what are some strategies that we can do in our daily lives? that will help us either mitigate pain or just like manage our pain for those of us that have pain. One of it is just taking a deep breath in, um, in through the nose, out through the mouth, and filling the belly. Um, Cause that helps decrease that, that fight or flight system that could influence that perceived like pain or that perceived damage. Um, so just before you exercise or if you're experiencing something, just take five deep breaths. That's, that's one of the ones that you can start to see where you take those deep breaths and then you turn your head left and right. It's like, oh, it got looser. Uh, the second one is you can come see an individual or a professional about it where you can figure out what the root cause is and then figuring out what the root cause is, then that's where you can see what exercises that you can do to help as well as understand and have control of that pain and discomfort that you're having. But the more that we understand the what is happening to us, the less uncertainty. And the less uncertainty um, psychologically helps us with that perceived damage. That's such a big, big point right there. And it's something that I would highly encourage you guys that are listening to do because you'd be surprised, I'm sure you know this, but how long people will go before they finally yeah. hit their breaking point and they're like, I can't, I gotta go see someone. It might be years, yeah. right? Yeah. Or they go, it's the same thing in the gym. They go and they try to figure it out on their own yep. and they do all these kind of stuff and oh, I saw this on Instagram yep. and some other guy and I tried the strategies and it's like, yeah. just go see an expert, Yeah. let them assess you and then they're gonna give you the tools. They're gonna be exactly. your guide and then you don't, you don't necessarily have to like always work with them but at least you're like, all right, I know what I have to do. I know I have to do my three little mobility moves. Exactly. I know that I'm gonna be okay doing this. And it really does give you that sense of empowerment yeah. and that guidance of like, all right, at least I know I'm not making things worse. Exactly. I'm not just like throwing stuff at the wall to see what sticks. Exactly. So that's a huge tip, honestly. Can you tell me about someone you've worked with, like some sort of success story that came to you that were maybe like in debilitating pain and then yeah. got out of it? Yeah, so I'll, I'll tell you two. I'll tell you one that happened like, that we were able to recover in just two sessions. Um, and I'll tell you one that took a while, right? So the first one, he was an individual, he was an architect, uh, had tennis elbow, uh, 
didn't play tennis though, so that's that's a that's another conversation that we could have. One of the things that we did was we just kind of didn't even touch his elbow. Didn't even like we just worked on his neck for the first one, and once once we um, evaluated and see, he he was able to regain his grip strength as well as decrease the the elbow pain. He said the pain was like maybe a seven out of ten and went down to one out of ten. Wow. Um, yeah, that was the first session. Yeah. Then, then of course, you strengthen the, the, the arm and everything. But for the most part, we kind of found what the root cause was. Wow. So um, it was a pain down here at the elbow, but it yeah. stems from somewhere up it, here towards the cervical it, spine. Exactly. That's, exactly. See, those are the type of things that, like, if you're not in this industry, it would surprise you. Like, yeah. what do you mean it's not an elbow thing? It's yeah. like everything kind of stems from the spine, right? Exactly. So. And then he came for a second session, and, yeah, he said he was good. So wow. didn't see him after that, which was, yeah. That was, see, that that's was a that. guy that could have been dealing with the tennis elbow for six months, a year, whatever, before he decided to do, see him about, do something about it. And now he came and saw you two sessions. Yeah. And now he's good. Yeah. Again, yeah. it's like you, there, there are solutions out there. You just got to seek out the right exactly. um, person to help you. Exactly. And then the second one, she came in for a low back pain. She was a, she was a college softball player and she was going to PT she was going everywhere, actually. Like she had, saw different physicians, she saw different PTs, different chiros, and she said that the pain was always like steady. It never, she never saw anything like inc like a decrease. But either she would have the flare ups of either constant or go up. And when I worked with her, it took about a few weeks to like really get her back to to where she wanted to be. However, it was having that conversation with her and figuring out like all right what is happening and yeah there was there was a uh, test runs and everything trying to see like what what aggravated it but what also made it feel better and then from there that's when we started to keep working and working so a little bit of trial and error exactly a little bit of trial and error and then from there you're kind of like all right with the deadlift we're like all right that's one that aggravates it how can we modify it how can we build you up from the ground and get you all the way up. So start with either the hip hinge, the kettlebells, uh, all these things. But we got her to a position where she was able to keep playing softball where pain free, which was great, which was her goal, as well as being able to exercise and work out like pain free. And she, it was the education as well as the exercises that she used to have that control and that empowerment, which ultimately helped her out that's awesome man and in a way you really are changing people's lives because being in chronic pain i'm sure you guys can attest to this is, is it really takes a toll on you yeah psychologically emotionally physically of course and once you can get somebody out of that i'm sure that's like one of the most rewarding parts of your job yeah and yeah. one thing i'd like to add it for those that don't know romy one of the things i appreciate about him is that a lot of times you go through the medical system there's a lot of specialization right you go to the foot doctor or the podiatrist for your foot or you go to like the spinal doctor. And I've always been a fan of uh, practitioners who understand the body as a whole and the entire yeah. system. Because like you said, you can't, I can't just look at the foot without looking at the hip and the spine and the, all the other stuff and seeing you walk. So somebody like Romy will look at everything yeah. and then make up their mind. Like you can still deal with the knee, the knee pain, but I looked at everything. I covered all my bases basically. Yeah. Cause everything really is connected. Everything is connected. Yeah. I got one more story. I know we're probably going long on time, but uh, I had someone come in for a shoulder issue. Uh, he was a softball player and the shoulder, the shoulder was like the one I got, like he had, I think a labral tear or something like that. However, it was, that wasn't the root cause of it. He got, got it from a swing and with the swing um we would think that it would just be like oh he tried to jerk it and everything right but as we had the conversation conversation it was essentially he had recurrent like ankle sprains so when you're hitting a ball you have to plant your foot and when he planted his foot he said that he felt he rolled his ankle and when he rolled his ankle that's where you don't have much control and that's where we talk about how you have some of that pain over here, which, yeah, you had some damage there, but the root cause is coming from elsewhere. Wow. All right, so to wrap things up here, what would be your biggest piece of advice 
for our listeners, like from your standpoint as a pain management expert, as a physical therapist, like is there anything that you want to kind of leave them with? One of the things that we want to do is normalize pain. And we have to acknowledge that it's one of those things that we will experience. And it's something that we don't have to be scared of. Um, essentially, pain is a thing that could tell us that there is damage or if there's a potential damage. So sometimes pain doesn't really mean that there's damage and keep doing what you're doing right and then if the pain or if the activity doesn't get better then that's when you would see an individual like myself or any healthcare professional well thank you so don't listen to the rumors i didn't get fired i'm still here, I'm still here. <laughs> yes, I will. <laughs> well thank you very much for being with us today romy being our first guest uh, I think a lot of people can benefit from what you've uh, you've shared with us. And I think education is huge. So um, that's what we're trying to do here on this podcast. And by the way, Romy operates out of right here, Be Fit Miami League. So if anybody wants to contact him, we'll leave his information in the description below. Uh, and they can follow him on Instagram, Back on Court PT, right? Yep, Back on Court PT. Back on Court PT, Dr. Romy, the man himself.